In this video, we're going to put together our last uh, few videos and start talking about the total shape of a graph. All right, so first let's review what we did in our last few videos. All right, we talked about the first derivative and the first derivative test. All right, that tells us if our graph is increasing or decreasing. And then in our next set of videos, we learned about concavity. And our concavity means we could be concave up like a cup or concave down like a frown. And now we're going to put these things together and think about the shape of graphs. All right, so let's look at the four possibilities that can happen. All right, so the first thing is our derivative could be positive, and that means we're increasing. Or our derivative could be negative, and that means we're decreasing. And the same thing can happen with our second derivative. It could be positive, which means we're concave up. Or our second derivative could be negative, and that means we're concave down. All right, so there's two possibilities for your first derivative and two possibilities for your second derivative, it's gonna give us four different shapes total. So if our graph is increasing and concave up, it's gonna look like that, because right, it's going upward, and also it's got kind of the right half of the cup, it's concave up. If it's decreasing and concave up, it's gonna look like this. It's kind of the left-hand side of the cup. It's decreasing because it's going down as I draw, but also it's kind of still pointed upward and would hold water. All right, now let's go to the bottom row. Now I'm concave down, but increasing. So now I got to have kind of the left-hand side of the frown. All right, that is going upward, but also uh, it's faced downward. And then decreasing and concave down is kind of the right-hand side of the frown. Again, it's kind of angled downward like a frown, but my graph is going down. So those are the four possibilities I can get when I'm thinking about the shape of my graph. All right, so if I start putting all these together, I can get the bigger picture of a graph. All right, so let's look at some quick examples. Right, we're going to draw some graphs that satisfy some conditions. First one is that f of x is greater than 0. All right, so really, I don't even need the bottom half of this axis because my graph is always 0. All right, I know my function is positive if I'm bigger than 1. So let's put 1 on our graph. And if it's between negative three and zero. So zero is here and negative three is there. And then f of f prime of x equals zero between zero and one. So let's draw a possible answer. So I know my derivative is positive between negative three and zero. So positive just means my graph is going up to the right and that fits that part. If my derivative is zero, that means it's flat. So now I'm gonna have a flat line from zero to one and then my derivative is positive again for bigger than one. So as long as my graph is going up to the right, that's fine. All right, so that's one answer, but there's an infinite number of answers. I could have a smaller slant and a flat part and then a really steep slant. I could have a kind of more wiggly graph as long as it's going upward and then my flat part and then a graph that kind of slowly goes up like that. All these things fit the narrative I want. They're all positive. They're above the x-axis. They're all increasing in those two regions and it's flat in that middle region. All right, one more example. All right, f prime of x is greater than zero for x is bigger than two, so we're gonna need two on our graph, and from negative three to negative one. All right, so my function is increasing in this region and increasing in that region. It's decreasing, because my function is negative, from negative one to two. And then my function is concave down, my second derivative is less than zero, so it's concave down for all x. So for the from negative three to one, it needs to be increasing and concave down. That is increasing concave down is gonna look like the left hand side of the frown. All right, it's increasing, but it's concave down because you kind of imagine the second half of the frown on the right. All right, then after that, it's decreasing and concave down. So I can just do the second half of the frown, and then it's increasing and concave down again, which is that left-hand side of the frown. All right, so it's look like that. There's really no way to switch from that decreasing to increasing part with the concavity without kind of making a sharp corner like that. All right, but this fits the narrative. All right, it's increasing where I want. 
it's decreasing where I want and it's concave down everywhere. All right, but again, this is only one option. I could have a more kind of sharp one, go to a gradual one, go to a sharp one or something like that. All right, but again, as long as it fits each of those pieces, then it works. All right, so this is generally, we'll do more practice with this in class when we have to go through like a whole uh, example. But right now I kind of want you to know there's four different shapes, all right, increasing and decreasing and concavity. When you start combining them, you kind of just have those four shapes, which is basically the cup broken up into two pieces and the frown broken up into two pieces.